here and welcome to the latest channel update. This time around, just like the previous three times, we're going to talk about the three broomstick smock that I am doing. Now, these two past weeks I have had significantly more time to build, so there is quite a lot to cover. So let's get into it. As you can see over here, this side has already been finished, just like this pillar. And all the pieces that were off color have been changed with the exception of the windows that are still missing because I don't have enough of these peculiar 4x3 windows. I actually did manage to get my hands on 20 or so, but I used them various places and none were left for over here both sides but not important we'll get there eventually what you might be noticing or actually the two things first is the main uh, pillar which has been finished and actually all the colors have been adjusted also over here if you notice last time i was talking about sweeping some colors again i removed most of the reddish brown here with uh, in, that includes the arches here i have just left this one here these two bricks so it connects better to the central red reddish brown pillar just for sturdiness and this is all going to be covered by the roof just like it is covered on this side. Not noticeable. So I kind of made a concession, decided that, well, these two bricks are kind of important to be connecting on both sides, these two main pillars. So when I take the second floor off and move it, it doesn't really fall apart, really helps the sturdiness. The other noticeable difference compared to last time is this left side seems pretty much finished. And for the most part it is. I spent a lot of time positioning the windows, making them way so they're sturdy enough and easy to remove with the roof. As before, this roof is not connected in any way. It's resting on uh, little support pieces here and on the roof section here. These two windows are also quite accurate to the original building and I have made them in a way so they correspond with the roof so they're not really stressed in any way the pieces i mean the only thing that's really missing here is the snow i actually did some work on it so it doesn't really look so strange but here at the toppest part uh, you can see that the snow is kind of falling down and here it's not really finished the only thing that i'm kind of missing i want to achieve kind of a slopey and feeling that there is actually here different parts of the roof where there is more or less snow and for that I need a bit more uh, white plate so gradually as we go down there will be a bit more snow as it's on the top which actually would make a lot of sense as for the roofs here I'm thinking about covering these lower uh, windows in their roofs with snow while leaving the top ones with less snow. Now obviously here there's going to be more white plates, but that um, I'm going to do another time. Now here, these uh, sections here is one day, well, hopefully next time, but maybe not. We'll see, depends how much time I have. It should look like this. This is just a skeleton version, just to show me where the window should be corresponding to the lower floor height wise and also how they should be corresponding with one another. Moving on, we have added Stanley here to the poker table, which was suggested by one of my most uh, frequent subscribers, Brickmatted. Thank you once again. And actually, one other thing that he pointed out is that here uh, during a card game, Hagrid did not win uh, Fluffy. He went off a Greek fella Instead, he won uh, the egg for Norbert. So I have replaced the fluffy piece with an egg and also I've added this printed uh, four aces tile, which should represent the flop, if any of you have any. Well, they just Texas hold them. That should really say enough to you. Anyway, so moving on, 
over here it's still pretty sketchy but this window here is pretty much finished with the exception of uh, over here and actually I should move the only free window I have there here and add these windows I've actually missed to do that I was thinking of doing it before recording but I missed it over here is just a little skeleton of what the roof should look like basically just how this uh, spacing corresponds so I can remove it easily and over here the bathroom is pretty much the same but I've decided to place the door itself this way because it's really problematic to actually have this door open and have roof over here because just like I mentioned last time nothing can really stick when you look over here because the the roof corresponds with this angle and if anything sticks out for example a door or I believe a candle was doing that last time it will hit the roof and that's a problem so if we had the door a 90 degrees angle compared to this door uh, it actually this support here was hitting it and that's, I didn't really find a good way to fix that so instead I'm gonna have it like that and it's gonna be resting over here on the other door on the other doors wall really and it should be fine now I'm thinking about creating kind of a turtle shell combination of pieces that just covers the bathroom over here not really sure if that's doable because again it has to correspond with the roof well enough but I kind of don't like the way it is right now that it's open I just want to have like a crump of pieces you can just put over here and cover the bathroom and take it off without really being connected to any studs but I'm not really sure if that's possible I have to think about it when I have time it might take some time to kind of make a hat that corresponds with this weird shape and might have to order some peculiar slopes uh to do it but yeah this is the bathroom and i feel it's uh really decent from this angle you can see really everything and i prefer once again like i said last time i was thinking whether there should be a bathroom at all and uh, i decided well better it should be feels right now over here there is a little change of this cover because it was hitting the roof so uh, unlike last time when I used the jumpers, I switched to these uh, tiles here with the railing and I just made this little piece here that just rests over here and doesn't hit the roof. Now inside there's still nothing in this room, still the minifigs are just uh, being kept safe here. I really do not, not have the time to uh, work on the interior of this room. Obviously you can see the roof here on the other side and some color pieces need to be changed and probably adjusted a little bit. I've just done it in a way so it doesn't fall apart. Uh, one of the last things I will do is go back and really uh, place a certain color, probably reddish brown over here. So it really sturdies it up, maybe just add another layer so you don't really see the gray on the outside so you only see reddish brown just for aesthetics purposes but that's going to be further down the road other than that here the position of the tables I've just throw them here I'm kind of um, thinking about maybe changing and not have these uh, four or rather, rather I should say three by six tables it's just too big uh, having a couple of them or three or four works but over here I'd rather maybe I'll break down these tables to 3x3 three three or 3x4s three and just have uh, maybe 5 instead of 3 but smaller tables. I also have this cat here from the old Lego sets I believe. It's from this Switch set from the Belleville line which has been discontinued for I don't know for how long. But I've had this cat for so long and I just want to put it over here just as a wandering critter. With that out of the way, I believe, oh, there's the backside of the windows. I don't believe I've shown those yet, but yeah, just 
was thinking whether I should place a window itself, like something like this on the backside, but on most pictures that I did find from the backside of the building, they doesn't really exist. Not on all windows, for example, here, one does exist, but over here I, it does not. But still, I decided to keep one on the central pillar and on these two just to have a smooth brick. And with that, let's move on to the lower floor. Here is the second floor removed. Now I should probably try and at some point, maybe once this is finished, to show you how th easily this is being removed. But uh, as I'm filming with one hand, I can't really do it. Here on the front side, much has changed, but unfortunately not as much as I would like. Still, I'm going to show you all the changes just the same. For example, one of the things that you should notice is that all the chairs have been changed. And actually, these are the exact positions of the tables. It's where everything should be, shouldn't really move anything. That's why you also see that most of the floor has also been placed. The only reason that it has not been placed is that I'm missing some of these one by two jumpers that I'm using to kind of cheat the chairs in a way so they're positioned kind of exactly in the middle of the tables. And because I don't have them in dark tan, I've placed some in tan. And once I replace them, I will uh, place the rest of the floor. I've just left some space so I can easily remove them because removing floor is pretty annoying if everything is set and done. Also, yeah, the chairs actually, I would say they're finished, but some of the back side of the chairs is missing because I'm ru I've run out of these pieces. They're in the mail, it just not reached me in time for this video. You should see them next time. But anyway, the positioning, like I said, are as it is and everything I feel is as accurate as is well possible pretty much for me. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit and yeah, over here from the entrance, you can see the table that Harry, Ron and Hermione are sitting in the scene of the sixth Harry Potter film, basically next to the stairs and right opposite to the stairs is where Slughorn is sitting and he comes to them eventually over here. And I've actually placed all three minifigs right uh, position corresponding to the table as they are sitting uh, in the actual scene from the film. And from over here, Ron is supposed to be seeing his sister, Ginny, that is sitting with uh, Dean Thomas over here and they should be making out, but right now they're still not making out, they're just having a glass of butter beer. Over here I've hidden a little niffler, just because I had one laying around the table and it's, rather than just packing it with all the other animals, I decided to place it here. I've used the bard from the one of the latest uh, minifig series over here, I've just changed his face obviously and uh, just placed it over here because I felt like in a tavern slash inn should always be a bar. And the bar, I've added this little keg here, which kind of resembles, it's similar to the one in the uh, medieval blacksmith. Just placed it here. Initially it should have been over here, but it just covers all everything that will be here on this shelf, which is still empty, but there'll be some bottles here. Just not done them really yet. And as for the other tables, it really leaves a lot of um, imagination to actually fill them up. So I'm not really sure if I should stick with just placing a lot of wizards, you know, or just I should place a lot of, let's say, characters that don't really necessarily belong in a Harry Potter world. Like, for example, over here, as you've seen already, we have the Penguin, we have Jack Sparrow, uh, we we'll probably have some other characters from not Harry Potter, obviously. I don't really want to go overboard with uh, this scene when it comes to characters that are not from Harry Potter, so I'll probably just try to add more wizards and witches and just different scenes, different people eating, or drinking and having conversations. As you can see now, these logs look a lot better when there is actually floor underneath them to support them, so they are not really shifted downwards. And what was really important for me is really to determine the positioning of all 
the tables and chairs, so I don't really have to think about that anymore. And that I'm happy really with the composition of the whole first floor. All that this really needs, this first floor, is some additional detailing, the minifigs, a few details over here, and uh, like I said last time, a few more details on the walls, like uh, trophies, maybe some different plants I see and some scenes uh, are shown, things like that. I will try to add as much as possible without being really overcrowded. One thing that I want to mention, these chairs, as you can see, they're maybe a bit too tall in comparison to the bar. I mean, they should be fine, but when you have a minifig, it just looks a bit weird because obviously the legs of a minifig don't go underneath the seating area. They just sit there. And to me, it looks a bit weird. I might want to change these pieces here and make them just maybe a brick shorter so they look a bit more normal. It's kind of weird in Lego, you know, because the minifig scale is kind of strange. And I've tried to have so when a standing minifig is actually standing next to a chair, the chair is not up to their chest. As you can see in many mocks, the tables compared to the minifigs are just gigantic. Um, even in the medieval blacksmith set, uh, you have the chairs are gigantic in comparison to the minifigs. They look great, but it's unrealistic. I, it kind of bothers my eye. So that's why I've really had the chairs and the tables here just as low as possible because it just doesn't sit right with me. And the last thing I want to show you here is the foot closet that I think I was talking about last time. I have the door over here, the foot closet, and over here we have the removable wall piece which rests on this from this side. And over here it doesn't really rest on anything, but we have this uh, 1x4 which connects to the upper floor, so when the building is in its fullest, this wall is not, doesn't move in any way, so that's good enough. Oh yeah, and by the way, I've actually changed the color of these windows, but only on this side, because I could only find six of these, but you get another six, so these, instead of black, should be pearl gold, just like all the other window frames. So over here, let's zoom in a bit, and after we remove this, we have the food closet, and this is removable, so you can see it and access it, and there is actually one stud over here for a minifig to sit. But I've tried really to put as much as possible in this uh, food closet. We have fish, bananas, we have a little uh, crate there with uh, some kind of vegetables, a lot of uh, jams, like uh, different bottles with jam or drinks or whatever you want them to be, some peppers, some croissants, some meat that's hanging here, lettuce, cookies, candies, pastries, and over here, because there was some space, I really want to do something with it, I hit a keg and a bottle. So I feel like this is really optimal thing that could have been done with this space that was really not that much space to begin with. Also, I was struggling of hiding the backside of these pieces that are on the front side, if you remember over here, these old brown pieces, they look great from this side, but on the other side, they're kind of hollow and it was kind of difficult to hide them, but I managed to hide them and place uh, bricks that would support the shelves. And also I left some jumper uh, plates here that would represent drawers. One of them is kind of half opened and we have some cheese here. Uh, if I had the slope here that actually had the cheese printed piece, uh, would have been amazing. I should uh, try to get my hands on at least a couple of those pieces when possible. So I would replace it. But yeah, um, overall I'm really, really happy with uh, the way that this closet turned out. Really like all the different colors and how all the space is really optimized and it really looks... Uh, to my liking, I hope you like it as well. So let's put uh, this whole model back together in one piece and have some final thoughts before I end the video.
Anyway, everything is put back together again and this whole model is coming together really nicely. Hopefully next time this whole section here will look like this one. If not exactly like this one, then close to complete it. The flooring on the second floor, I hope will be partially done. Although the details here still need to be determined. I need to order the back portion of these chairs as well, which is kind of expensive, 50 cents or so, or maybe a little bit less, but still pretty expensive for seven remaining pieces. We'll see how the tables are here and what minifigs I'll place. This back side does not have any other windows other than this one, so I will have to make this whole plate structure to cover everything and then obviously cover it in white, or most of it anyway. Over here, uh, add two additional windows that are looking kind of the, like these ones, but obviously different height. One thing that I'm considering of doing, uh, other than changing these two rows of plate over here with uh, dark tan, because it kind of looks weird, uh, I will probably make this central pillar a bit taller, just so the uh, difference with this window height-wise is a bit more accurate. Like this is fine, but maybe adding another two or three rows of brick on top of everything would look a bit better. We'll really see once the other windows on the other side are positioned as well. Other than that, the first floor is almost done. Once the pieces for the flooring come, I will place that and finish the chairs and really try to really think of the storytelling on do in the first floor. But other than that, this mock, I'm really satisfied with how the progress is going and can't really wait to have this whole thing finished and show you how it looks. Um, really something that um, I will be proud of to really showcase on my shelves once it's complete. Uh, this whole mock is actually taking quite a lot of time, uh, more time than I suspected it to take. And also it's going to end up costing a lot more than I was hoping it would cost. Uh, but I think in the end it will be worth it. And the whole process of making this and going for the end goal, that is the final result, really excites me. So once again, I thank you for uh, watching my video. Thank for everybody that's commenting. Uh, thank you, Brickmatet, once again for all the suggestions. So if you want to leave a suggestion as well and tell me what I'm doing wrong or right, if you want to see some of your ideas implemented in my mocks, please uh, put down a comment. You can also like, share, subscribe to my channel. Subscribing really, really helps me. You can also follow me on Discord or on Instagram if that is what you like doing. So once again, thank you, and I will see you very, very soon hopefully in the next 10 to 14 days as per usual. Thanks for watching, thank you for your support, stay healthy and I'll see you very very soon. Bye for now.